Hey guys, doing a video here on cyanobacteria, commonly called cyano, uh, some people also call it red slime algae. So I ended up getting cyanobacteria and I actually got a pretty darn bad case of it as you can see there. It, uh, it, there's not much sand bed to be seen, it, it took over. Um, so I'm going to go through why I got cyanobacteria. I know exactly why I got it. So I'll go through and educate why I got cyanobacteria. We're going to talk about the five correction methods uh, for cyanobacteria. We're going to talk about pre prevention of it. Then I'm going to go through basically day how I, what I did to get rid of it. I'm going to give you basically what I did um, basically day by day to get rid of it. Um, in the beginning, it was a lot more heavy. There was a, every few days I was doing stuff. Kind of towards the ends, it was a once a week thing. But I'm going to tell you what I did by day marker um, in order to get rid of cyano. And then at the end, I'm going to show you a time lapse of my tank here, basically week by week, showing you the progress towards uh, completely resolving the issue. And then at the end, it's going to be the last couple weeks where uh, I show a uh, time lapse to show that it did not come back. So show what I did actually worked. All right. So again, just kind of as a quick note here, these are the topics I'm going to cover. Before we jump right into that, let's talk about what is cyano. Uh, real quick here, cyano is a photosynthetic bacteria that behaves like an algae. It's not actually an algae, it's a bacteria. The best tip that I have for you is act quickly before it gets out of control, but if you didn't, don't worry, we can still solve the problem and win the battle. All right, so why did I get cyanobacteria? A uh, couple things, lack of cycling bacteria. Uh, if you notice, uh, when, if you watch the video when I set up my 110, the normal bacteria that I used was not in stock. I bought a very small container of a brand that I've never used. Um, it was a very small amount that it said it's going to treat 110. I put that in with all intents to buy the, my normal brands, and I never bought my normal brands. So it really didn't get the cycling bacteria that it needed. Work got crazy. It went two months without water changes or filter cleaning, which is very, very bad. I think that's just obvious. And then a diminished cleanup crew. I took the cleanup crew from my 45-gallon and shoved it in the 110 and uh, didn't update so definitely a diminished minus, minimized cleanup crew um, and not sufficient for the type of gallons i was trying to clean with it all right so next we're going to go over the five correction methods so they are physical removal good bacteria addition balanced nutrients targeted cleanup crew and chemical treatment so looking at these a little bit closer, the physical removal piece includes siphon, turkey baster, removing with a fishnet, or removing by hand. So looking at the fishnet piece, so you kind of just, as you see there, you just kind of scrape it along the bottom. You do end up getting a fair amount of sand with this method. So it's not my favorite one, but you're really just essentially scraping that mat and uh, scraping and pulling that mat off. So you can see there, you are getting plenty of uh, the cyano in the fishnet. And again, we're just gonna kind of scrape the fishnet off, kind of pull that mat or scrape the cyano off, kind of pull that mat up and we're gonna pick it up with the fishnet. So inevitably doing this method, as you can see there, there's gonna be particles flying around. You'll have to kinda of 
swoosh and pick up those particles as you see there especially when you kind of get the big pieces left and there's little pieces on the sand bed you're just going to kind of swoosh it around and pick up those little pieces make sure you clean up as much as you can again this method works really good when there's a big mat of it like i had there but it's not necessarily my favorite method as you do lose a fair amount of the sand bed as you can see there the other method is siphoning uh, a couple notes here if you don't normally siphon your sand bed please do not do this you will create more problems disrupting disrupting a sand bed that isn't normally disrupted uh, so please don't do this if you don't normally siphon your sand bed if you do siphoning your sand bed uh, i don't recommend doing this at the start got to get rid of that big mat first or you don't want to just bury that big mat or it will create more problems later but this is a good option towards the end as you'll see i did use siphoning the sand bed towards the end of my issues and you'll kind of see when i transferred to that versus the other methods this here is using the turkey baster you're just going to kind of suction it off the sand bed you can see it just kind of breaks loose there and we'll pick it up with the turkey baster um, a lot less sand loss than if you use the fishnet and uh, this is a direct removal whereas kind of that siphoning the sand bed um, does remove a lot but it can also bury some of it under the sand bed which of course will just turn around and regrow so in my opinion, again, the turkey baster is my go-to method. Um, hand was also listed. Uh, it's going to be similar to what the, the uh, fishnet did if you were to just kind of peel off that mat. Uh, but uh, it's going to break up a little bit in your hand as you go to pull it out. So again, turkey baster is my go-to method because uh, I can get as much of it off the top without taking gravel out, without disturbing a ton of stuff. So this is my preferred method. And you will see this throughout my uh, progress of treating this issue. You're gonna see I do turkey baster uh, removal a lot. So talking about good bacteria addition. The goal of adding good bacteria is that the good bacteria will outcompete the cyano for resources. So there's a couple different things we can do for good bacteria. One is bacterial treatments, which I did not use. And the other is uh, simply adding uh, a bacteria source is what I did do. So bacterial treatment, the goal is to treat the outbreak while adding good bacteria so it removes the cyano like a chemical treatment while you're adding that good bacteria all at the same time um, i like i said i did not do this um, i did just the adding of good bacteria that way i could kind of see my progress and as things improved that uh, this was my preference i've never used a bacterial treatment um, i've always just uh taken the route of good bacteria addition. All right, so the bacteria I did add, I added two things. I added Microblift Special Blend and Microblift Night Out 2. And just kind of looking at this note here from the manufacturer. So add Microblift Night Out 2 in order to balance your biological filter. Follow recommended maintenance schedule for Special Blend in order to keep your water quality at its best. When used together, Special Blend and Night Out 2 can cycle an aquarium in as little as 24 hours. All right, so looking at the Microlift Special Blend here. Uh, Microlift Special Blend is a specially formulated consortium of bacteria designed to create a stable biological system. The benefits it provides includes beneficial bacteria, removes odors, clears water, and reduces maintenance. Uh, it kind of, it's a full ecosystem in a bottle, um, basis, the beneficial bacteria. It's a safe and, and I'd like to point out, a natural choice. Um, 
it breaks down the organic waste. It improves growth in nutrient uptake in corals. It is an all natural live bacteria and it biologically reduces nitrates. It breaks down excess proteins and aids in the reduction of ammonia and nitrates. So here's kind of the description of it. Um, one of the features that it has here that I want to point out is it's a spore-based photosynthetic vegetative strain of bacteria. Um, it reduces maintenance. It uh, has benefits for your fish health. So it's a, it's a good all around uh, treatment. It is reef safe and again, it is all natural. Um, this is the, kind of the dosing schedule recommended day one, eight, 15, 22, 29. Um, so it, there is a routine schedule that you would use to continue to help boost in the health of your tank. All right, so looking at the uh, Microblift Night Out 2 here, I want to point out that Night Out 2 uh, is a specifically formulated bacterial blend which rapidly starts and stabilizes your biological filtration. Um, it also quickly and safely decreases ammonia and nitrate toxicity. It's safe to use. Um, it is reef safe as well. And then it kind of gives you some suggestions here of uh, times to use it. So the nitrification process. So kind of looking at that, um, this whole circle diagram here, um, fish eat food, fish waste turns to ammonia, night out two converts ammonia to nitrite then nitrite to nitrate. Plants and algae use nitrates in, as fertilizer. And uh, this is where special blend comes in to knock out those nitrates to stop that fertilizer piece so you don't have uh, the different algae growth and things like that. So again, it's both combo and they create that full life cycle when used together. All right, so the key features of Night Out 2. Uh, so one, it instantly cycles aquariums. Again, recommended to use Wish Special Blend. Uh, it reduces fish loss. It reduces ammonia and nitrates. And uh, of course, we, we noted it is safe to use and it improves water quality. All right, so looking at the recommended dosage here for new aquariums, they have a recommended dosage for maintenance, and then they have this note that says salt water slows down the bacterial action, so for a salt water tank, they recommend adding 25 to 50% more than the dose recommends. All right, so next we wanna make sure that we have balanced nutrients in the aquarium, uh, specifically nitrate and phosphate. We wanna make sure we have those balanced. Uh, some of the ways to do that uh, is increase maintenance, water changes, filter changes, and make sure the sand and rock, are, sand bed and rock are clean. Ensure you're using zero TDS water and use absorber medias. The water changes, filter maintenance, and clean of rock and sand is pretty standard, so I won't really go into that here. Uh, but I do want to go into using zero TDS water. So if you don't have a TDS meter, uh, they're pretty cheap. You can get one for like eight bucks on Amazon. Um, and just kind of looking at water quality here. Um, this is the one that I got from Amazon. Again, it's pretty darn cheap. So there's a couple probes in there that read it. It's very simple uh, to turn on and operate. So here I am turning it on and I'm gonna put it into my water. You can see you just dip it in there and it reads. And uh, I am running with zero TDS water. As you notice, it didn't jump up. 
if it would have jumped up, uh, it would not be zero TDS. I generally check this every few months. Um, when I see it start to move up, that is an indication that I need to do filter replacements on my RO water system. So make sure you're using zero TDS as that does promote growth in algae and, and uh, as well as cyano. For media absorbers, I recommend Purigen and Roafoss. Uh, Purigen here. Uh, Purigen is a great uh, remover of organic waste and it also uh, aids in controlling ammonia nitrites and nitrates. The other one I recommend is Roa Foss. It specifically removes phosphate and silicate. So I want to add a note as well about silicate. Uh, silica is a contributor to diatoms as well. So by controlling it, you're kind of helping uh, control two issues in one treatment. I just want to add a note for a very long time, maintenance alone was said to be the uh, way to control um, and resolve cyano. Although it is a huge contributor, I do think that these other methods are going to make your success a lot quicker and a lot more sustainable. All right, so the next thing I want to talk about is having a targeted cleanup crew. The two I target is blue leg hermit crabs and Astraea turbo snails. Now, there are plenty of other cleanup crew items out there that will do the job. However, these two are on the way cheaper end and will do the job for you. So this here is the blue leg hermit crab. And I just want to point out kind of in its description, it says right there that it consumes cyanobacteria. And this is the Astraea turbo snail. And I want to point out in its description as well that it says it eats cyanobacteria as well. It also points out that they eat diatoms. And I just did a random Google search to kind of look at this as well. And you can see blue leg hermit crabs will eat cyanobacteria. Um, the main competitor, the red leg hermit crab, says may. So big difference there, will and may. The Astraea turbo snail will eat cyanobacteria. And again, the big competitor, the margarita snail, is said to consume it. It doesn't say will. So uh, I go with the ones that say will. Next up is chemical treatment. I will note, I did not use this and I never have. Um, this will remove the cyanobacteria that is there, but will not prevent it from returning because it hasn't solved the problem. So you still need to do background work to prevent it from returning. This will just remove what's there so you don't see it. But not too long afterward, it will return unless you've done something to actually resolve the issue. All right, so moving on to prevention, we'll just kind of hit a few high notes here on um, some of the steps to prevent it. So first is maintain balanced nutrients. Second is have good flow free of dead spots. Third, routine water changes. Four, maintain clean sand bed and rock scape. Five is maintain clean filtration. Six is don't overfeed. And seven is have a balanced cleanup crew. All right, so next up, I'm going to give you a day-by-day -day breakdown, exactly what I did um, each day that I did anything with the tank. I'm going to have it in here so you know exactly what I did and the frequency I did it. So day one, I used a fishnet to remove cyano from the sand bed. I added microblift special blend. 120 milliliters of it. I added Microblift Night Out 2, 80 milliliters of it. I added 20 Astraea Turbo Snails, 8 Super Tonga Nasarius Snails, 1 Sand Sifting Starfish. I replaced the Purigen in the filter. I replaced Roa Foss in the filter. And I stopped feeding Reef Roids. Stopping feeding Reef Roids was just to make sure I took out any excess nutrients that I did not need to have in there. Day two, it was back pretty good again, so I turkey bastered the sand bed. Day four, I did a small water change, about three gallons, and I siphoned the sand bed. 
Day five, I added 50 Blu-ray Blue Leg Hermit Crabs. Day six, I turkey bastered the sand bed again, because again, just kept coming back. Day eight, turkey bastered the sand bed, added 120 milliliters of special blend and 80 milliliters of night out. Day 10, I siphoned the sand bed and did a small water change, about three gallons. Day 11, I turkey bastered the sand bed. Day 15, I turkey bastered the sand bed, added 120 milliliters of micro lift special blend and 80 milliliters of night out. Day 16, I did a small water change, about three gallons. Day 20, I turkey bastered the sand bed again. On day 23, I added 90 milliliters of micro lift special blanks, that's all I had left, and 80 milliliters a night out. Day 25, I turkey bastered the sand bed again. Day 30, I did a small water change, about three gallons. I siphoned the sand bed and I cleaned the filter. Day 37, I turkey bastered the sand bed again. Day 38, I did a small water change, about three gallons. On day 42, I turkey bastered the sand bed again. Again, that's my favorite way to get rid of it. On day 45, I did a full water change of 10 gallons on a 110, 10%, and I siphoned the sand bed. On day 51, I did a small water change, about three gallons, siphoned the sand bed. Day 57, it was gone. And after that, I moved to routine maintenance. Uh, so here, what we're gonna have now is I'm gonna show you video progression time-lapse. I'm gonna have the day and a video of what it looked like so you can see over time how it dissipated. And the videos are spaced uh, roughly one week apart. So we're gonna go through day one, eight, 17, 24, 38, 44, 50, 57, and 64. So you can see that it was gone and stayed gone. Uh, hopefully you like this. Hopefully it helps you. Give me a like, give me a subscribe, check out some more of my content, and I'll get more out soon. Thanks guys.